What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we are back with the career mode series round number seven here for the Canadian Grand Prix. As you can see in the driver standings, we are doing absolutely superb in this Manor Racing Team car. Uh, ninth place and 20 points against our name. If you haven't seen the previous episode, I recommend you go check that out. The Monaco Grand Prix, one of my favorite episodes or favorite races on the calendar. So we're moving on now from that absolute high of racing around Monaco to now we've got to get on the job, uh, get on with the job at Canada now. So uh, we're going to continue that uh, car development like we always do in every practice session. Uh, but for this uh, next section of the championship, the uh, focus is going to shift from downforce to almost uh, straight line speed and drag reduction, almost weight reduction as well. So that's going to be the focus of the R&D, at least for the next few rounds. Um, so hopefully that can uh, uh, really improve the performance of our car. Uh, a new upgrade for this round, I believe, was the fuel efficiency. So we'll see that uh, take effect in the uh, race. But we hit the wall. We've hit the wall in Friday practice just as we were starting our tire wear test there. And uh, at the Wall of Champions, just caught up on the curb there, the second part of the chicane, um, unsettled the car. As we uh, have a look on the replay, you'll see I just take too much curb and I tried to floor it a bit too much, was going in a bit too quick. And uh, yeah, just got a lot of push after being unsettled from the, uh, the curbing there, hit the wall and I didn't even hit it that hard to be honest. And that was all she wrote for that practice session. So. I uh, had to uh, have a delayed tire wear test. It got delayed to uh, free practice three. So here we are, and it uh, looks like it's much better conditions. The first two practice sessions had uh, really overcast conditions, and it just didn't make for really good running. Uh, it, I found it really hard to uh, stick to the deltas or beat the target time set by the team for not only qualifying pace, but also the uh, tire wear test to some small degree. So I'm going to lament in this chance to uh, run in optimal conditions here in practice three. We uh, end up at the end of this uh, tire wear test and it looks like we're going to get a perfect score. And we do. 105 points out of 105. Uh, 50 resource points to add to the tally. I tried to go ahead and do the qualifying pace again. Could not better it, so I have to settle for 30 resource points. And that's 16th in this uh, practice session. So. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens in qualifying. It looks like we're slightly quicker than Pascal. Good afternoon, and we hope you're ready for an exciting qualifying session as the teams make their final preparations here in Canada. So as you can tell, it is uh, raining in qualifying here, so that's going to mix up the grid a little bit. So it's going to be a bit of an open-ended session, this one. Um, just a case of getting used to the uh, conditions and uh, just blasting in as many laps as you can. It's intermediate conditions at the moment. Whenever it's intermediate conditions, I always like to go out at the start of the session, just bang in some laps um, as quickly as I can, because you never know if the uh, session might get worse as it goes on. It could get better. It could go either way. So it's always good to get some early laps in, um, get your eye in essentially, and uh, really push towards the end of the session when you have more of a understanding of the grip and just what the, uh, the car is capable of in these tricky conditions. And at the moment, we're in position three. Uh, we just continue to set laps and... Um, from what I gathered, the session continued to get better and better. Um, it got to a point where the rain stopped falling, and um, in this final eight minutes, I'm going to put on uh, one final set of tyres, about five laps worth of fuel, and just continue to do laps over the course of this uh, qualifying session to round us out for this Canadian Grand Prix. So, yeah, in seventh place at the moment, we dropped a few positions while we were in the pit lane for about a minute or two. And uh, now it's our turn to uh, once again go out and show what we can do in this Manor car. Bear in mind, this Manor, yes, it is it is slow. It is one of the slower cars in the field. But we are generally a lot closer to the field than where we were at the start of the season. So I think that might explain why we are so far up the order when it comes to these really weird sessions where it's like raining and... Um, we just get in a really good lap in optimal conditions, but uh, yeah, it's the end of the session now and uh, This is our final lap and uh, let's see what we can do in this final one Hopefully we can uh, just cement our position in third place with it, which is just absolutely outrageous where we are by the way I can't believe where we are either um, I, I feel like there might need to be some tweaking in terms of the AI's performance in these kind of sessions I just feel like uh, it might be a little bit too easy for us to uh, to get into the kind of positions that we're in But uh, on our final lap there, unfortunately, we actually ran out of fuel and uh, we're actually green on our 
last lap there. So, a bit disappointing, but uh, we are well and truly up the order in this Canadian Grand Prix. Like I said, I feel like the AI should be um, tweaked a little bit to just be a little bit more competitive in these kind of sessions. We've we've done this twice now. We did it in Spain when it was uh, a drying track, and now here today in Canada, we've managed to do it again. Pascal, by the way, qualified in 15th place. For those wondering, we are still on Ultimate AI, so the difficulty is still there. It's just, uh, we've had a lot of really good things go our way. We've had so much luck over the course of this season. Speaking of luck, this is uh, the rivalry update with Perez, and we just, only just beat him in the rivalry by one single point. So that was uh, a very lucky escape for us there. I thought I had no, uh, no chance of beating Perez there, but we managed it. And finally, we're going to upgrade the engine unit, and uh, yeah, that's going to be an improvement on the car before we get to the next race in Baku. It's time for the Canadian Grand Prix. There is, as I look out of my commentary box window, a very large and very excited crowd here today, eagerly anticipating another memorable race. Lewis Hamilton took his maiden win on this circuit in 2007. Jensen Button came from last place to win here in 2011. And there's certainly no shortage of drama on offer here at the Canadian Grand Prix. Okay, we've had a bit of bad luck so far this season, so we really need to show the team what you can do. Are you joking me, engineer? If if any team has had bad luck, it's definitely not us. We have been one of the most lucky... This is the luckiest I've been in a career mode, I think, ever. So uh, here we are on the grid of the Canadian Grand Prix, starting from position three. And uh, let's have a look at that old race strategy. I believe it's going to be just a one-stop because Canada is traditionally a kind of low tire deck kind of setup. It's only really affecting the rear tires and, and uh, how early you get on the throttle and whatnot. But uh, as you can see there, the weather forecast that goes from sunny to rainy weather towards the end of the race. So that's going to spice up that finish to this Grand Prix. So... If you look at the race strategy, it looks like it might suit the way that the weather is going to go. So if we do the majority of the race on the soft compound tyres, then uh, we should be able to go the majority of the race and uh, maybe only do one stop in this race, switching straight onto a set of intermediate tyres. But at the moment, you can see I'm kind of trying to alter the uh, strategy at the moment. I was trying to switch to uh, super soft tyres for the end of the race. I was wondering why I couldn't do that. I just felt like, why are we going on the ultra softs when we have the super softs available? I just wanted to have that super soft available just in case I wanted to do an undercut um, and just like uh, split up the uh, the load on the uh, on both sets of tires for the, like the race. So I wanted to maybe stop a little bit earlier if the rain wasn't going to come or something like that. So it was a bit weird. I tried absolutely everything I could to change the uh, the tire compound, but it just was not having it maybe because I was going with aggressive in terms of the tyre strategy for this weekend. Maybe there was like literally no sets available uh, for the race in terms of the super soft. So it's a bit of a weird one. I'm not too sure what to make of that. I think uh, just to play it safe, I'm going to refrain from using the super soft tyres altogether in case I don't have any sets to use at all. But now we're all gridded up for this Canadian Grand Prix. Five red lights, please. Let's get off to a good start. Away we go for this Canadian Grand Prix. We'll spin off the uh, start there, but we're going to hold position heading into turn one. Raikkonen and Hamilton wheel to wheel as they negotiate the first few corners of this Grand Prix. We're just holding station there in third place. Even though they were both compromised and going side by side, I couldn't really run with them and put any pressure on them, which is... Very interesting to note that the pace initially already, you can tell it's just not there. They're getting away in this first sector of this Canadian Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton leads from Kimi Raikkonen. Rosberg is in P4. We've got both the Red Bulls chasing him down as well. So it's uh, going to be a case of just trying to hold on to this uh, lead group of cars if I can. If you remember back to Spain, wow, that was a massive loss of the back end there. I was too passive. I was letting um, a lot of the AO cars go a little bit too early on in that race. I wasn't defending hard enough, and I just got bullied in that Grand Prix. So I'm not going to uh, make that same mistake today as we actually, speaking of mistakes, just made one there. And uh, there goes Rosberg around the outside, wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact as we head into the hairpin on this third lap. Bit of contact once again on the side pods as we go side-by-side -side on this uh, 
final DRS straight. Uh, this is the back straight leading on to the start finish straight, essentially. But, uh, yeah, I don't believe Rosberg has DRS at the moment. There's contact. He unsettles the rear end of my car there. And I don't know how he managed to save that and keep us in a straight line there. That was really aggressive from Rosberg there. Um, almost, you know, took us out of the Grand Prix there. Rosberg on the attack once again. Lap 6. Tries to hang around the outside. Now Vettel does him because he's uh, too focused on trying to pass me. And uh, looks like uh, uh, Nico Rosberg there that spun out after losing the position to Vettel. He tries to hang it in there up the inside. I believe he tags Vettel's left rear tyre. A uh, right rear tyre, sorry. And um, just ends up spinning into the wall. You'll see on the replay from Rosberg's on board. Tries to hang it around the outside. He's too focused on trying to get in front of me. Then he forgets about Vettel who hangs it around the outside. Makes contact with the wheel. And uh, ends up in the barriers there. Chipping off a bit of his front wing. Very lucky not to lose the majority of his uh, wing there. Or even like lose a tyre there. That was very lucky for Rosberg on simulation damage. Meanwhile, the end of lap 6. Vettel uh, managed to squeeze past us for P3. So it's not going to be a podium finish for us today, but to be honest, we're not really racing these guys initially around us. Um, in all honesty, I'd like to kind of tag onto the back of these guys, use DRS and Slipstream to run with these guys. And um, I don't know, finish inside the top 10, that would be a remarkable result for this. Uh... Oh. There's 29 laps of fuel remaining. We're really over fuel right now. We have a big reserve to get through. Like I said, it would be a remarkable result to finish in the points in this manner. I feel like with the straight line speed nature of this track, I think we can do it. But as you heard on the uh, engineer's radio there, we're looking really good for fuel at the moment. I'm guessing that uh, our fuel upgrade, fuel efficiency upgrade is doing us really well here. Lap 9, this is Bottas. He got past us into the uh, hairpin. And uh, yeah, we're in a bit of a train once again. We'll see what we can do against Bottas. He looks a little bit slow compared to the others in the corners, so um, we may be able to do something against him, but no, not really. He kind of got away after that. Now we're getting attacked by Alonso. So once again, just like the Spanish Grand Prix, we've got this mad track position, but we can't really do anything with it because our manner is just that slow um, when it comes to everyone being on equal footing in, in the race, and we lose the back end there as we get distracted trying to get up some uh, information from the engineer. Just asking about the strategy and what's going on with that. Um, I wanted a reminder of when the uh, next pit stop was and what lap it was. So, yeah, anyway, lap 12, you can see we're in the slipstream of Alonso. Gonna use some DRS to possibly get close to him. Maybe even go for a move up the inside into turn one. You know what? Why not? Let's do it. We, I don't know, we've locked up. Gone in a bit too deep. Had to cut the first uh, corner there. And, um, yeah give up the place to Alonso there because we kind of gained that illegally. So uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. They lost a lot of time in that whole kerfuffle with Alonso. Ricardo got past us as well. Here comes the other Red Bull of Verstappen who I believe has already made a stop. So the people who started on Ultra Softs, they amassed a huge lead in front of me and now a lot of those guys have made their stop and they're emerging behind me again and repassing me. So it's, uh, it's kind of making me look like a bit of a I don't know, a fool, a backmarker, I don't know, because we're just getting overtaken so much, but it is because a lot of the leaders have uh, made their stops, and they're just trying to get back in front of me once again, as uh, we're on the soft uh, compound tyres, really trying to run long into this Grand Prix, repassing Verstappen there into the uh, final chicane, which was very nice to see from us there, but uh, we can't really do much against Verstappen, who is on uh, fresh soft tyres, and as a force in here up my inside here. It's going to be very diabolical here. Made contact with Verstappen. Contact with the uh, Force India there. And there's yellow flags behind us as these two AI car cars go hammer and tong on the uh, straight there. But look at this replay. I was just squeezed either side. I was kind of pinballing off of those two guys on either side. And uh, they both passed me there. Just getting absolutely swamped by these AI in this Canadian Grand Prix. I must say, the uh, straight line speed today doesn't seem great. Maybe uh, a lot of teams have brought some uh, engine upgrades to this Grand Prix. You do see that traditionally when, you, when we come to this part of the season. Uh, a lot of teams do have an engine update, and uh, I feel like we've been caught out on that because we haven't put any un engine updates on our car. So that's definitely going to be the priority after this Grand Prix. But either way, we are going really aggressive here with uh, both Ricardo and Alonso. I believe Alonso made contact with us as uh, we were on the straight there, just like Rosberg did at the start of the race there. So that was really weird. Lap 21, we can see there's uh, 
A lot of uh, weather starting to form above us, but Verstappen is out of this Canadian Grand Prix. Let's see what the problem is here. He's running side by side with Bottas here, so surely there's been some contact. And Verstappen's just put himself in the wall. Well, no, he's not put himself in the wall, but, you know, the contact has uh, really made him understeer there. And he, he couldn't really recover from that. In the wall, lost a wheel, and he's out of this Grand Prix. Very unfortunate for him. Lap 22. We can see this is uh, Nico Rosberg overtaking us once again on lap 22. It seems like we're the entertainment car at the moment because all the overtakes are happening on us. Daniel Ricciardo is out of the Grand Prix now. So uh, we'll have a look at what happened to him. This is him smashing into the back of a Mercedes. I can tell you that was Lewis Hamilton who had a tyre puncture. I'm not too sure what the cause of his puncture was, but Ricardo, man, you're better than that. You saw Lewis coming from a mile away. Why didn't you move? He just, he was like, nah, I'm out of this Grand Prix. I'm just going to drive straight into the back of you. So, uh, yeah, meanwhile, I, when, when I'm looking at all these AI retirements, I do a flashback and have a look at the replay of what's happening, and then I read you on the action. I'm out of the flow, and then Carlos Sainz just overtakes me there, and now there's a yellow flag because Hamilton's parked the bus on the hairpin, and I've got an illegal overtake because I've parked stationary cars, FIA. Charlie Whiting, come on, where's the logic in that? You want, you want me to get involved in the car park? Fine. But just please, just let us race. And, and oh, God's sake, look at the AI doing that. That's just unbelievable scenes right there. They're all stopped and they all just pile drive into the back of each other. I believe Signs got away without any damage there, but it was the cars behind that just caused all the damage there. So I don't know why there wasn't a safety car, not only for Ricardo going out, but then just like the massive calamity that happened at the hairpin. Um, also, there was no safety car for Verstappen either, and he was really close to... Oh my god, there's another retirement. This is uh, Romain Grosjean out of this Grand Prix. Let's have a look. He's following his teammate, and he's got an engine failure. So, uh, surely... Can we please have a safety car now? How many retirements is this? Five, six? And there's been no safety car over the course of this Grand Prix yet. After I had a look at the replay, I blew up my tyres, and uh, there goes Rosberg. Every time an AI car would retire, I'd go into the replay cameras, have a look, and then when I resume the race, I'd lose a position. But uh, either way, we're coming into the pits now. That was very, very lucky that I wasn't speeding there, because I was all locked up and sideways as uh, we're getting ready to switch on to intermediate tyres. It has started raining, and I believe this is uh, the ideal time to switch to the intermediate tyres. So it's us versus Mercedes in the pit stops at the moment. Can we get a good stop? Yes we can. 2.7 seconds. And uh, that's a net gain of one position over Rosberg. So that's going to be really crucial in the final 10 laps of this Grand Prix. Really clumsy mistake there. Pushing a bit too hard in wet conditions. And there goes Rosberg up the inside. No, that's actually Daniel Kvyat who actually managed to gain a position over Rosberg. And here comes Kvyat once again up the inside into the hairpin. Let's leave him a bit of space. I've run, out, run over the debris that was caused by Hamilton and company. But uh, Kvyat gets past us and moves inside the top four, which is uh, a fantastic but also not very surprising result for Toro Rosso this year, who have really upgraded their car so far. Esteban Gutierrez is out of this race. And now finally, we have a safety car in this Canadian Grand Prix. We're following him on the straight, and it's another engine retirement. Both Haas cars are out of this Canadian Grand Prix because their engines are blown up. Gene Haas, he would not be happy at uh, the situation of his Haas Formula 1 team at the moment. So there's seven laps to go and there's another car park on the straight. It's a very similar situation to uh, what happened in Russia where we had to stop there. Um, Raikkonen disappeared so I'm like, okay, I'm going to go. I overtook him and apparently that was fine. So I don't know what's going on with this episode, guys, but the AI, just some of the glitches and stuff, it's uh, it's a bit weird. It's a bit weird, to be honest. So hopefully we can return to a bit of normality in the next episode. But the uh, safety car is coming to a close at the end of this lap. We were literally almost a lap down compared to the leaders, and uh, we had to get unlapped by the safety car. Finally caught up, and now we are ready to race to the flag. Now we've overtaken Kvyat, who was... Uh, a bit all over the place on the run-up to the final chicane. And uh, there's three laps to go now, closing in on Valtteri Bottas. And once again, the AI kind of lacking in these intermediate conditions. I actually felt like I could really hold it with these guys here. You know, despite being in this mana car, which was absolutely, you know, terrible in dry conditions. But as soon as there's, you know, water on the track, we seem to come alive a little bit, which is uh, quite 
interesting to note so far in this season. Either way, here comes Raikkonen. He's on the attack. I believe Rosberg is going to follow him through as well. So that's two positions we've lost on the straight there. And uh, these guys are going to duke it out here on this final lap of this uh, Canadian Grand Prix. But I don't think we're done with Rosberg just yet. We might have a little look here into this uh, first corner. And that we actually locked up there going in way too deep. But uh, Rosberg left us the space and we run, run wide through turn two. Rosberg might have us here once again. Lost the back end. But we still got on the power just early enough to get away from him. And uh, now Kvyat is on the attack and uh, has actually got past Rosberg there. So those two guys there are going to battle it out on this last lap and allow me to build up a bit of a gap to those guys, as you can see there. So that was uh, the perfect situation for us there. And I think we're going to bring it home here for position five in this Canadian Grand Prix, which has just been absolutely crazy for the majority of the race. We did not have the pace, and then all these AI retirements came in, and the rain came down, safety car, we brought it back, and now we finished fifth place. Unbelievable. Top job, my friend, top job. I was a bit worried about this one at the start of the weekend, but you've pulled through. Thank you. And as we can see, it's time for the podium, and as the drivers make their way out, there's a familiar red suit making its way to the top step. Fantastic win for Ferrari. So, there we go, guys. Absolutely crazy race in this Canadian Grand Prix. Alonso and Bottas get on the podium as well with Sebastian Vettel. We finish in P5. So many AI retirements and just weird things happening. Our teammate Pascal Wehrlein comes home in the end to score a point as well. So, that's the kind of race that this Canadian Grand Prix served up for us today. Just absolutely mental. So many retirements. A few glitches here and there with, uh, you know, getting stopped when it came to safety car periods. And, uh, yeah, just, just weird things in general happening over the course of this weekend. Uh, one thing that does need to be improved is the AI's pace and aggression as well in intermediate conditions. I feel like, in general, the AI just need to be even more racy. It's been a little bit too easy for us, I must say so far in this uh, career mode championship but hopefully like I said earlier in the video things can return to normality and uh, we can see the kind of usual performances from a mana car that uh, you should really expect but this car is improving and the, the like the closeness of the field is um it's getting closer as everyone upgrades their cars um, you'll find that the back market teams actually upgrade more frequently and they're the like the components and stuff, I think, are more cheaper than the uh, top end team. So naturally, that's the uh, the order will get closer together, and that's why sometimes when we have um, tricky conditions, that's why we're able to be so close sometimes. And when we get to OP tracks like Monaco, that's why we finish fourth in the end with a really good race. So. With that said, we've uh, got an engine upgrade coming for the next race, which will be in Baku, I believe. So that's going to be a first time for me doing a career mode there. Uh, and if I remember back to the PC, I believe the AI were really OP there. But this is the Xbox now, and I feel a lot more comfortable and a lot pacier compared to the PC. So uh, you just never know what might happen when you come to a career mode race. It seems like the AI's pace is very... Uh, unbalanced at the moment. So you just never know what you're going to get when you come to a Grand Prix weekend. So that's going to be this video for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure you leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to see plenty more F1 2016 videos. And until my next one, guys, the Baku Azerbaijan Grand Prix. It's going to be mental. It's going to be a slipstream fest. I can't wait. Hopefully you guys are excited for it as well. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.